Hey guys, Blazin here. Today, I want to talk about Halo Infinite and about the new network model update. I know I'm very fucking late, but that's how much I don't really care or pay attention to this game. But uh, yeah, I think the network model update is, is worth talking about, as well as the weapon changes. So that was really it about that update that happened like months ago or how many months? I, 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 I don't even know. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk about some shit. So uh, let's do this. Alright, so the new network model, uh, how is it, what do I think about it, and uh, yeah. So, on my end, it's been going great. There's not too much to say on my end, it's, I never really had too much of a problems with the old network model for me. Of course there were a few hiccups, but I didn't have it as bad as, you know, other people out there. So I was already on the, on the good end when it comes to the, uh, network stuff. So if anything, what this network model did was definitely change the way how weapons perform. And I definitely heard the uh, the feedback of like the network model feeling slow, and uh, I felt that too a little bit. But I did suspect, and it seemed like it was the thing, where like it was just a thing to get used to with the new network model. It wasn't it wasn't heavy aim like Halo Five. Heavy aim is kind of like random where it comes and goes. Uh, the slowness that came with the network model was at least consistent, and that was my thing. So it was just like it's definitely a thing that was just like people would just had to get used to, and. You know, we're, we're like what months later, and now people have seemed to stop complaining about it. So, yeah, it, it definitely was a thing that people just had to get used to. But I've also heard uh, feedback about this network model feeling worse for some people. <laughs> so I don't know how that I was, I don't know how that happened. And uh, it's funny because you know, for for the competitive scene, it's like uh, Texas is known for, to have like the best like network like performance. And now it seems like Florida might be the best place for the best number of performance if you're like competing. So some technical wizardry has happened, and uh, you know, for speaking again from my experience, it's it's mostly positive on my end, but maybe for some people it's a mixed bag or just a straight up just uh, fuck you three four three kind of thing. But uh, yeah, that's the network model overall. It uh, again on my end, it's all good. Alright, next, let's talk about the weapon update shit that has happened. Uh, I'm gonna stroke my own ego for a little bit here, so... I can't help but feel like some of these weapon changes may have not have happened if I didn't talk about it. Cause it was just... It, again, it might have been just a coincidence, but I remember like making my last video talking about my stuff about Halo. And, you know, shortly after, oh hey, we're doing weapon changes. Um, it, it, it was most likely just a coincidence, but I, I probably had nothing to do with that. I also want to acknowledge that people have talked about weapon balancing and changes and whatnot, but when it comes to talks about weapon balancing and changes and shit, like, that, that kind of conversation doesn't really last long, and then people are going back to complaining about the network update before, beforehand, before when it was shit, and the store. <laughs> and, and maybe a little bit of content or, or some shit or, or lack of playlist. That, that's what I'm getting at. Like the 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 talk about weapon balancing stuff, it was is brief and it doesn't get talked about. As far as I'm aware, and again, let me stroke my own ego for a second. But I don't really see a lot of people talking about or giving examples of weapon balance and updates and shit like about the weapon sandbox in Halo, other than maybe me. I, it feels that way. All right. Okay, I'm done stroking my own ego. Uh, moving forward. Alright, let's start with the commando. Now, when I first tried this thing, I, I was a little concerned because the commando now is ridiculous. I in a good way. Uh, I was a little worried because I'm just like, alright, this thing's uh, usable now. Uh, and then it seems like on the you know on the competitive side of things, it's it's also like the commando's in a good spot. So, uh, good job 343. I, I think the commando doesn't need to be touched anymore. However, still in my opinion, I still prefer Season 1 version of the Commando. Because it took skill to aim, and the TTK was extremely fast if you were... Like, again, there was there was a... I don't want to say there was a clear risk and reward, but there was a risk and reward for the gun. But now, it's in like a spot where it's just like, now everyone can use the gun. Which, now that means you're no longer... Re you're no longer a special snowflake if you try and use the Commando anymore. Because now anybody can use it. So uh, I can make an argument where now there's a there's a loss of there's a loss of uh, skill expression when it comes to the commando, but hey, overall it's in a good spot. Uh, don't touch it anymore. Next, let's talk about the stalker rifle. 
Uh, there isn't too much to talk about the stalker rifle. I know it got like a like a battery nerf, and like an overheat nerf. That's really it. I mean, that's fine. Overall, the stalker rifle nerfs aren't too bad. Still good. Not much to say about it. Next is the plaza pistol. Uh, fuck. What we'll changes it to get again? Uh, I think the overcharge is back to normal. It's not as long. And I think it got a nerf to like the P shot. And that's about all I remember. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, it's damage output has changed. Or even the tracking when it comes to the overcharge shot. Uh, but from my experience, the plaza pistol is... I think Halo Infinite has got to be one of the worst plaza pistols in the series. It's one of the most inconsistent plaza pistols in the series. It's like 343 just can't get... They can't get it balanced right. It's like, since they, they took away the EMP ability and gave it to the Disruptor, it, they're, they're, 343 is just like, Oh fuck, what do we do with this thing now? I'm telling you guys, just 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 increase its lethality. <laughs> like, there's the... At least make it useful on something in the lethality front, if you can't come up with anything special with it anymore. Or, I have an idea, maybe for like the next Halo game, if that ever fucking happens. Maybe take the Plaza Burn effect to the next level. If you guys played Halo CE, and if you overcharge the Plaza Pistol shot, and if it hits the surface, you'll notice it has a burn effect. Uh, you can probably, like, take that effect to the next level and have like a... I don't know. Like a Plaza Burn effect. That's my idea. Next, let's talk about the Gravity Hammer. Uh, I'm not sure if this thing got nerfed or buffed. I'm still a little bit confused on it. I'm going to assume it got maybe like a slight nerf, but it's still like really good. I I'm, a I'm a bit uh, torn with the Gravity Hammer because if you remember in Season 1, and even past Gravity Hammers as well, there was two Blast Radius effects. Either you were far enough to like rip off a player's shields with the Gravity Hammer and then you can finish them off that way, or you were, you know, you had to get the red reticle in, in, in the older Halo games to, to get the kill. And that was somewhat true still in Infinite, the, when, when the game came out. There was, a, there was a blast radius where you could take off a guy's shields and you can, you know, finish them off after that. Or if you were close enough, then, you know, you got the kill. However, now, with the, or at least it has been for a while now, the, the gravity hammer is just, you know, that shield break radius, as I like to call it, is gone. It's now just a kill radius. Either you're you're within range for the kill or not. And you know, on one hand, I think that's you know that that's kind of stupid. But on the other hand, the gravity hammer is very much treated as a power weapon in Halo Infinite. So I guess you can argue that it's fitting just for this game. So that those are my uh, two cents on the gravity hammer. Uh, next weapon that was uh, adjusted was the heat wave. Uh, it got like an aim assist nerf and shit, like just things to make it harder to aim. I mean, it's still performing fine, uh, no complaints about that. If anything, that, that's more of a good thing. It means if you really do get a long range shot, that that shot is more well earned. Because it's like, you did that. Uh, the gun didn't help you much, no, you did that. So uh, the heat wave, you know, still fine, uh, no, uh, no complaints. And uh, lastly, to talk about the bandit rifle, I think the bandit rifle just got a 10% uh, increase to its reload speed. That was really it. Damn, that actually took... <laughs> Jesus, that took 343 a long time. I remember, I, I forgot who it was that said that, uh, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna increase... We're potentially increasing the reload speed of the bandit rifle. That, that was said a long time ago. <laughs> so what, it took them like months to implement that unless they were just waiting for for a bigger weapon balance thing but uh it's there and uh it's cool and uh no complaints now before i move on there's actually two weapons i want to honorably mention first let's talk about the sidekick because even though the sidekick received no balance notes the sidekick has definitely changed with the new network model the sidekick is much more consistent and not in a good way let me explain so I'm glad the sidekick is more consistent, that's good, but it's not consistent in a good way because essentially, if you watch my last video talking about the sidekick, whenever Bloom kicks in, for the most part, your shots are going to miss when Bloom starts to kick in with the gun. However, now, with this new network model, from my experience, 
the bloom, for the most part, might be more in your favor. So when bloom starts to kick in, more shots are more than likely going to land on your target than miss than with the last network model or the old network model. So it's good that I'm landing shots, but I'm not the one landing the shots. It's the bloom doing the work for me. You get what I mean? So it's a double-edged sword. So it's almost a little bit like now the sidekick is really unskillful. <laughs> but I'd rather get killed by the sidekick than the assault rifle in Halo Infinite any day. So I'll take that. So y you can almost mindlessly spam shots with the sidekick and you're you're more than likely going to win. And especially like like if you're someone with the battle rifle, like now the sidekick, you know, maybe you should fear it a little bit now, even if you have a rifle. Which, in my book, that's a, that's a good thing, but it, again, it's also, <laughs> like, the guy with the sidekick is now just spamming shots now. Again, double-edged sword. I don't know what to think about it. And lastly, let's talk about the AR. I may be crazy, I don't know, but definitely, like, the AR feels weaker with this network model update. It feels like whenever, you know, you're shooting and spread starts to kick in, like, Bloom really, really starts to take effect, where uh, shots start to miss more than they're hitting. That's really about it with the assault rifle. It's not bad, it's still useful. But oh I just God. noticed maybe it's a, just slightly weaker with the new network model, which I'll take it. All right, next, let's be like every monkey that plays Halo Infinite. Let's make fun of the store. Now the store in Halo Infinite absolutely disgusts me. <laughs> you, you know it's bad when I have to talk about it because I never give two shits about the store. As everyone knows, the store is overpriced and I hope none of you guys are buying this shit, because if you are, you're part of the problem. Unless you really like this game for some reason, then, uh, you know, who's stopping you? I know lately people have been complaining about the lack of content, or like, w new weapons and shit. And, uh, you know, there is that one saying of, you know, vote with your wallet, as in like, you know, don't fucking buy anything in the store. But I would almost argue to the point where, in the case with Infinite, is like, vote with your player count. Like, stop playing this game. <laughs> Go play something else. I mean, Halo Infinite is a free-to-play model, and with a free-to-play model, you need players. And if nobody's playing it, then if 343's making shit, like, what kind of content is 343 making it for if there's no players? So I would almost argue to level up, level up the vote with your wallet to vote with your player account. Wait for the game to add shit that you want. Or fuck, try and play Halo MCC. Alright, that's the store. I went harder on that than I thought. Uh, next, let's talk about the anti-cheat situation, which has been a hot topic. Because uh, 343 got rid of their Arbiter anti-cheat for easy anti-cheat. And it had to be like the worst timing ever. Because at the time when easy anti-cheat was being implemented into Infinite. Uh, one, Apex Legends was hacked. Like had that huge hack. But according to, to easy anti-cheat, it wasn't on their end. It was more on Apex's side. So it really wasn't the program. And then the second thing that 343 once again failed to fucking consider is that MCC has been breached like like easy anti-cheat was breached on that game for a very very long time and because you know Halo Infinite is their baby you know they've just been ignoring the MCC allegations when it comes to the cheating problem and it's it's really fucking bad because even like you know 343's biggest supporters slash content creators are also getting cheated on and shit and it's like they have been just so fucking slow to respond now at least my experience for mcc and i've been playing it semi-regularly when it comes to cheating in mcc it's mostly been in the ranked uh halo 3 2v2 playlist as far as i'm aware and then maybe on occasion in btb on btb at least it's not as bad like i remember the last the last time i played like halo 3 btb i remember there was definitely a guy like using walls or walling you know he was able to see through walls that's kind of like the worst of it. It hasn't gotten bad to the point where I haven't seen like flying warthogs in Master Chief Collection. Oh yeah, I should probably make one thing clear. Uh, it's not like, don't get it twisted. It's not like their Arbiter anti-cheat was any better because, you know, during like, you know, season one of the game when people were actually playing the game, th their cheating program was breached anyways. I remember, I still remember to this day <laughs> when me and my friends were playing ranked and there was a guy that had sniper and he had aimbot. So we just couldn't challenge the guy. So don't don't get that part twisted. It's not like their Arbiter anti-cheat was any better. If anything, if 343 actually tried to look into the cheating 
situation in Master Chief Collection that has been happening for a very long time, maybe the same fate would not have fallen to Halo Infinite. And that is my TED talk about Halo Infinite today and a little bit more. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you want, links are down in the description, and this video has gone on long enough. So, uh, until next time, peace.